Hello, everyone. The topic of this episode is life's biggest lie. I should say one of life's biggest lies. So, but for the for the sake of just naming this, life's biggest lie: how finding your purpose is not the answer to everything. Now, I know you all are used to hearing me talk about purpose quite a bit, and if you've been following me for a while. Everything that I talk about is all about finding your purpose in life, right? Going after your purpose, going after your God-given gifts and talents and doing what God has put you here to do. But you know what? There's an issue with that. And that's what I want to talk about. That's why I'm calling this life's biggest lies, or, or, or again, I should say one of life's biggest lies, how finding your purpose is not the answer to everything. Finding your purpose is one thing, and that's extremely important that we know what we're here for, right? And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But If you know what that purpose is, but you're not transformed and you don't change, right? There's not a renewing of your mind. You're you're not becoming that person. Then all you're doing is looking at that purpose. Now I'm speaking from conviction. You guys know I love you, but I'm going to keep it real. You're looking at that purpose. You're looking at what you know God put you here for, whether it's to counsel people, coach people, help people. I don't know, have a salon, be an author, write books to change lives, whatever it is, you know, be a nerd, whatever it is, whatever it is, what you feel like God God has put you here for. There are times if we're not transformed and we don't change, right? We don't change. We then begin to get frustrated because we look at that purpose. We found it. We know what it is. We don't even need to talk to other people, you know, to, to, to know, okay, what is our purpose? What am I here for? You know, many times we can kind of figure that out, right? But we're looking at it and there's times you can get frustrated because it's like, okay, God, you've shown me what I'm here to do. I've put some action into doing it, but why is it not happening? You know, why is my life not uh, panning out the way that you're showing me that it should be? I know that I'm put here, for example, uh, and I'm just making this up on the side. I know that I'm put here, for example, to to encourage people, or I know that I'm put here... um, um, to, uh, it, it could be anything, start these, to start this nonprofit or to start this ministry or to just, uh, you know, man, there's just so many examples, but, you know, I know that I'm put here to use my gifts and talents to, to give back to this particular organization or this group of people or to teach or whatever it is. But why is it that it's not happening? You know, wh- why is it that uh, the, the, the vision I'm seeing has not fully come to be what it needs to be, right? That's what can easily happen when we find our purpose. We know what our purpose is, but yet, wow, what happened? Uh, why am I frustrated? There's a podcast I produced a long time ago called Frustrated and Anointed, something like that. I think that's the title. You guys should go and listen to that. There's, there's sometimes we go through a season where, uh, or it may be called anointed and frustrated, where we know there's an anointing on our lives, right? But then there's a frustration because it's not quite coming to be what it needs to be. So I'm going to break this video up into two parts. Part one is going to be about we have to be transformed. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, I've talked about this before with you all, and I'm not sure if it resonated with everybody because I want to take my time and make sure we get this point. There has to be a, tr- a renewal of your mind, the way that you're thinking, the way that you're processing information, the information you're feeding yourself. Are you repeating that information? Are you training your mind? And I'm talking about the subconscious. Are you training your mind in the direction you want to go? Because remember, we talked about how those paradigms, a paradigm is almost like your operating system, if you want to think about it that way. Think of your, your mind as like a, a computer chip, right? And so you're programmed to do things a certain way, right? We all are. That's why sometimes you can drive the work without even thinking about it, because you just kind of go into this automatic mode. So think about a paradigm, sort of like a, a set of habits and beliefs, and it's just what you know to do, and you've always done it like that. If we don't get rid of that old paradigm, because there really is no training a paradigm, it's actually getting rid of the old paradigm and replacing it with another. If we don't get rid of that old paradigm and get ourselves um, in an environment where we can learn new things, be exposed to new things, learn the scriptures, you know, learn who you are in, in God, learn new things, read new books, you know, get around people that can, can can help show you things that you're not used to seeing and help transform the way you think. We can be looking at the purpose all this time, like, my goodness, why is it not happening? And we're thinking God's not showing up answering the prayers. That's how, that's how I used to think, at least. Let me speak for myself. You know, God, I've been praying and praying and praying. Why hasn't this happened yet? Where are the people at that's supposed to come in my life to be my helpers? And I never knew. It took me years to learn this. I have to be transformed by the renewal of my mind. 
I have to think differently. I have to become that person so that what I'm looking for is attracted to this person that I've become. I'm going to say that again. God, please give me the wisdom to say this the way you want me to say it. Uh, there's an amazing uh, uh, minister. His name is Apostle um, Joshua Selman. It is extremely rare. In fact, this may be one of only one or two times in the history of me doing a podcast that I would even mention a minister. I'm very, very guarded with what names I put out there. But what I love about him, he's from Africa. I've been uh, listening to many of his um, his uh, live broadcasts, and I absolutely love him. Uh, but what I love about Apostle Joshua Selman is he did a message a while ago, and I should have written the name of that sermon down, but he talked quite a bit about the importance of a transformed mind. And I had already been reading several books on this, just so you know, and I've been through coaching programs, and I teach in my own coaching program, The Importance of a Transformed Mind. But one of the things um, that I love, he said, he gave a really good example. I pray that I can remember it. But he gave an example about um, uh, you can have a person that um, um, doesn't have a transformed mind. You can put this person in an environment, and the bottom line is that if the mind is not transformed, that person's going to go right back. The, 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 the situation is going to uh, force that person to go back into who that person naturally is. So, for example, you win like a million dollars, right? You've heard stories of many people winning a million dollars. And you've also heard stories of many people going broke not long after having a million dollars. Well, if the mind is not transformed, you're going to go right back into that same mode that you were in before. Because that realm that you're in, now he does a better job explaining it than I did, uh, that realm that you're in demands those types of results. And so one of the things that he was, he was preaching about, which was such a great message, is um, he was preaching about it's just so important that we understand who we are in Christ, right? It's important that we understand who we're becoming, and it's important that we be transformed by our thinking. Now, there's a whole lot of books out there, and in fact, I, I, I pretty much can guess some of the books he read with some of the things he said because we're reading some of the same books, and I can identify some of the language he used. Um, only reason I'm not mentioning some of the books, I'm careful about mentioning authors and such, but there's a lot of writings out there that backs up uh, what he was saying. A lot of writings out there that backs up, you know, as a man think it so he becomes, right? And, and, and the power of our thoughts and, and the environment that that creates. The point I'm trying to get through, let me just slow down a little bit with this, is that we have to be transformed. We have to be transformed in our thinking. So seeing our purpose is one thing, but if we're not transformed, then what, then what good is that going to do? Right. If you see it, but you don't believe that that that's who you are, if you don't if you don't if you don't make some 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 changes in your life so that you can become that new version of yourself, then you end up looking at that purpose and you end up getting frustrated. I know I have at times in life. Right. And we're thinking it's something outwardly that needs to change. Did you guys catch that? We're thinking the, the thing that needs to change is on the outside. Right. More people just need to order for me or I just need more helpers. Right. Life hasn't been fair, which I don't know anybody that would say life's been fair, right? You get my point? You're, we're focusing on the external, and we're not realizing when we change, when the internal changes, when we begin to sit and be still before God and understand who we are, who does he say we are, when we begin to learn and grow and develop, right? What we are looking for begins to look for us. It begins to attract itself to this new person that we're becoming. There's a beautiful passage in Romans 12, too, and I've read it a number of times before, and it talks about do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I love that passage because it's a constant reminder that we have to be transformed. Have you all ever, ever heard of, um, um, it's called cybernetics. I think I'm saying it right, cybernetics. And cybernetics, I wrote down, I, I actually wrote, uh, read a book on this, to be honest with you. Cybernetics, one of the, one of the um, things that cybernetics talks about is <clears throat> how um, cybernetic mechanisms like a rocket or something, they all are, are, have a programming. So when a rocket... Um, Remember, I, I gave a quote a long time ago, and I can't remember where that quote was from. It could have been by Emerson. I like to give credit when credit is due. But when I said, remember, a rocket fails its way to the moon, a rocket is constantly correcting courses as it's heading to that, that target, constantly correcting courses as it's heading there, right? So cybernetics um, looks at me uh, mechanisms, you know, systems, whether it's, you know, rockets or whatever it is, right? And cybernetics is all about... Um, the corrections and things that it has to make, right, 
as 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 is heading toward that goal right so cybernetics is all about the mechanical mechanisms in it well there's another terminology um and i think the name is maxwell maltz I think he was a, a surgeon or something and he was observing how there were so many people that I guess they were doing surgeries on, um, uh, and some people were not happy after their surgery, and I guess some people were. And he came to realize it was all about the way that they thought about themselves. So, for example, if they had no surgery or, or something like that, the people who thought had good thoughts, positive thoughts, thought well about themselves, they were able to see, wow, my nose looks great now, for example. And those who had negative thoughts, no matter how perfect the nose was, they still only saw flaws. And he uh, came up with something a long time ago. But anyway, there's a terminology that he sort of attached with this and it's called psycho cybernetics and so just like a, a machine a mechanism works you know he related it to you know the brain and how we process things now I'm not trying to turn into some you know person that uh, sounds like I'm an expert with this but I read enough right uh, and it, interesting enough Apostle Joshua Selman mentioned this in one of his sermons as well so I was thinking okay he probably read the same book I read but anyway the point I'm making is that I bring this up to say with the psycho cybernetics, and I wrote down this term, um, he, it, it teaches that the subconscious, you know, the subconscious part of our mind operates just like a cybernetic uh, mechanism. And, and so just like that sensing equipment, e equipment that constantly helps that rocket correct as it's heading in this direction, that's the same thing with us in terms of what we're hearing and what we're seeing, what we're telling ourselves, right? Does that make sense? And I also wrote down, it's, 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 it's creating these that's why the power of visualization is so important that we be transformed by the renewal of our mind because when we can visualize it, it it's almost like it reminds you of um, uh, the Bible's definition of faith being sure of what we hope for certain of what we do not see right but if we can visualize it if we can do our best to visualize it and stay in that mode it helps the brain makes the right actions and corrections as we're heading toward that goal Hello, everyone. Just as a reminder, I'd like to invite you to join my book club for my book, Necessary. And if you're interested in going on a retreat, the Necessary Retreat, more details can be found on my website at unlockinggreatness.com. I love you all. Let's get back to the video. So the whole point with cyber, with psycho-cybernetics, I, I know I'm going a little deep, but just follow me. The whole point with psycho-cybernetics is it's almost as a way of saying we're going to end up at that goal right this is in my own terminology we're going to end up at that goal uh, uh in terms of what our mind is teaching us and in, 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 in our our default programming so if i believe that despite all of these obstacles and setbacks and things in my life right this purpose that god has shown me is mine that's who i am that's what i'm going to be doing that's who i'm going to become as life does what it does, right? And we all have these things that come our way, whether it's financial, health, deaths in the family, you name it, and God knows I've been through all of it, right? There's a, co there's a correction. There's sort of like a course correction of like, gosh, this hurts. Man, this doesn't look right. My finances may not look like it. My situation may not look like it. I don't see my helpers quite yet, but I know because the, the, you know, this is the direction I'm heading. This is my purpose. That's why it's important that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds because it, it matters very much what we think about. Does that make sense? It's not so much what happens, it's what we think about what happened. So I, 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 by God's grace, um, uh, you all know I pray. I do my best at, at a minimum to pray for an hour at night. I have a whole routine of fasting and doing a number of things. But one of the things you all don't know, and the reason why I'm so passionate about this topic is, I am constantly, constantly uh, sitting with God or reading books or meditating in prayer and, and being reminded of who I am, the direction I'm going. You know, I wrote about that in my book, Necessary. I, my book's over there. I don't have it right in front of me now. But I wrote about a chapter in there where I didn't realize I had a caged mindset. I didn't realize how caged I was. I wasn't allowing my mind to be transformed and renewed. And in fact, I used to think that, well, uh, if it's not in the word of God, if it's not something that's just biblically based, you know, I'm not going to be listening to some coach. I'm not going to be reading all these other books about the mind and the brain and this and that. It was almost like an arrogance, right? Not realizing that I was really um, uh, 
I, I want to say this in the right way, and I'm talking about myself, not you. I'm talking about myself, not realizing I was being ignorant by not allowing myself to learn and to understand other things so that I can grow and be transformed in the renewing of my mind and not knowing that it actually increased my faith. So when I read those kind of books that talks about, you know, um, visualizing, you know, what, what God has shown you in life. And I read books that talks about cybernetics or cyper cybernetics, you know, and there's some things about it. That's a little weird to me. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'm doing all of that. But when I, when I grabbed the nuggets from it that I felt were needed, it actually increased my faith because I was able to see, you know, from all of those books and things that I'm reading and coaching programs I've been in and seminars I attend. Oh my gosh, what they're really saying is, and then I would be able to point to a passage in the Bible and back it up with scriptures. Let me slow down a little bit. This is going to be part one. There's, uh, I'm going to do a part one and a part two because I'm not going to be able to get all this in in one. The part one is, one of the biggest lies is, we think when we find our purpose, hey, that's it, we're good to go. Life is all good now. And all I'm getting at is that, no, 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 no. Finding and understanding the purpose that God has for us in our lives. That's just the first part. And praise be to God for those of you who feel like, Z, I pretty much know what my calling is. But we have to go through two, well, it's probably a number of parts. I'm going to talk about two, two main things that I know of in order to walk in that. You know, faith is already a given. Believing in God and trusting in God and doing what he tells us to do, that's just a given. Let's just put that out there as a given. I'm talking about you working on you. And number one, and this is what I've noticed from my own personal journey, being renewed in my mindset, a transformation, understanding how my, even my thoughts, even my thoughts have a lot to do with the way that I feel. Understanding that those feelings have a lot to do with the actions I get up and take. Understanding those actions that I get up and take has a lot to do with the results that generate, right? Now, we all know God's in control, and we all know that, you know, if it's God's will, it'll happen. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything to dismiss the scriptures. Anyone that knows me, you already know that. But the point I'm getting at, I didn't understand the power of a transformed mind. So for those of you that are searching and looking for how do I find my purpose, that's good. That's good. That's good. And I've talked about that quite a bit. I won't go into that more. I've talked about that not only in mentorship sessions, but I've mentioned whatever it is that you do, you better make sure, number one, it lines up that, you know, uh, uh, with advancing the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean you need to be a minister, just to be clear. But all throughout the Bible, anything that God did, it had something to do with advancing God's agenda, right? It, it needs to have a level of service to some degree, right? It needs to call you higher because there's nothing God calls us to do that doesn't call us higher. That's extremely important. And another thing, and I just taught this in a recent mentorship program, there needs to be, it, it needs to be bigger than you. God is generational. So, you know, if you're in that mode of trying to figure out what your purpose is, those are four elements I would ask that you sit down and you explore and you really spend some time before God and ask him to make things clear to you. But once you get there, baby, here's my whole point of this podcast. And I guess I should have said this in the beginning. That's just the foundation, like the first part. That's not the answer to everything. Because now you got to work on you. Now you got to let God begin to grow you and stretch you because you have to become. Does that make sense? So part one to this is, I think I'm going to call this part one, um, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, something like that. I'll figure out what the subtitle will be. But the part one is you have to work on being transformed. Allow God to work through you. Get yourself in the right environments where you're going to be able to learn from other people, right? Get, start reading the right kind of books and things that you need to read so you can understand, why do I respond the way I respond to things, right? Learn more things. Get yourself around more people. Right. Even if all you can do is sit and watch YouTube videos on this, on leadership, mindset development, on coaching, on whatever it is. But you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, because the way that you think about the situation has a lot to do with the outcome. If you think it's not going to work, you're thinking negatively, you're thinking I'm too old, I'm too afraid, I'm too this, I'm too that. Right. You know, every time I, I take a step forward, it's always a step backwards. Baby, your words are like prophecies. That's just how powerful you are as an heir of God and as a co-heir with Jesus Christ. Yes, sure. Your words are like prophecies. 
So it's very important as you find what your purpose is in life, say to yourself, okay, that's wonderful. Thank you, God, for showing me that, right? That's my foundation. But now I got to work on me. And that's what I spend a lot of time on. You all just don't get to see it. If you would have seen me late last night, early this morning, even at three in the morning, you see me constantly going before God in prayer, going higher in the spirit, asking him to show me in the spirit what is mine so that I can then go get it in the physical, right? Have, asking him, God, oh, remind me again, God, who am I again? Show me again, God. And you begin to get that image, that visualization of who are you in the spirit. That mind begins to get transformed. So then when you look at your finances or you look at your circumstances or you look at, you know, situations that's not working well, you're not even worried about that because you're becoming that person that's going to attract to you what's available to you at that level. That's one of the things I love about um, Apostle Joshua Selman. And I really got to find that sermon. I'll make sure I put it in the show notes. But he said a statement, something like, um, I can't remember the exact word, so forgive me if I don't phrase this the right way, but something like there's not a lack of money. He said uh, uh, money, the, the money is already there. The money is already attracted to, you know, this person that you're becoming, but you got to go higher to where it's at. I know I'm par- Did I write it down? Let me just see if I wrote it down because I really want to say it the way he said it. I guess I didn't write it down, but he, he made a, his whole point was that whatever it is that you're looking for. And I did a, a, a episode on this a long time ago, whatever it is that you're looking for is already searching for you, but not at this particular level is searching for you at a higher level. And so I love hearing him say that. Cause I'm like, Oh my goodness. You know, these are some of the things I've been also talking about. Um, and so it was just a very, very good sermon to hear someone who I love and respect tremendously, uh, to say some of the very things I believe wholeheartedly that, you know, whatever it is we're looking for, it's already right there searching for us. You guys, I truly do believe that God, um, wants to bless us far more than we can ask or imagine. I really do. I really do believe, and let me speak for myself, many times we limit ourselves because of our mindset. So I'm going to do a part two. And a part two, I don't know the exact title I'm going to give it, but it's going to be something about, uh, let me see that I write it down. Part two would be um, something centered around, so why are things not changing? Like what are the things that holds us back? from becoming transformed, right? So that we can walk in that anointing and walk in that purpose that God has given us. So I'll make it a part two. I love you all. I pray that you know that I'm speaking out of love. I'm speaking out of love because I get so many messages from you all. And many of you, you, you've figured out what your purpose is, or at least you're close to, you, you got a pretty good understanding, but you're wondering why have things not changed? And I'm telling you, one of the major things that has to change is your mindset. So Join me for part two. Part two is going to be very important because I'm going to talk about what are some of the things that holds us back and some of the things that we need to work on and do so that we can walk into um, that beautiful, um, uh, I should say, that purpose that God has for us. I love you all. Be encouraged.